welcome back to another Sunday Funday video. I'm delighted with the comments, feedback, likes and subscribes on the last video. It's uh, very encouraging to make some more content. So today I'm going to bring you along on a multi-part video where we do some out of the box thinking and machining here on this engine block. So this is a test engine, it's an A plus engine from a race mini. We use it as a test bed. We did some engine development last year and brought it out for some testing at the end of the winter. Uh, it made some great power and performed really well, but unfortunately near the end of the day, it developed a noise. We brought it back to the shop, we stripped it, and we found that the noise was as a result of a broken bearing cap. The cap failed during operation. Uh, a crack uh, came through the cap and the cap failed. So we need to replace this bearing cap in this motor. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace it with a four bolt steel center main cap, one like this. Produced uh, from billet steel, a much stronger option and a much better option. So this uh, cap is uh, one of three caps on this engine block, which is designed to hold the crankshaft in position as it rotates uh, during operation. It is critical that there is a very specific alignment between these three caps so that the crankshaft can rotate freely. The process is called line boring and that is where these three caps are machined on center in a machine. There is a specific machine, a line boring machine, that is produced to do this. Unfortunately, it is way outside the budget of our shop to do such. So we're going to do this process on our Colchester lathe. We have a beautiful old 1940s Colchester lathe up in the machine shop, which I'm going to show you uh, in due course throughout this video. We want to bore these three caps in line. These two caps are the original caps with the engine block and they're perfectly on center and the bore is absolutely perfect on them. So what we need to do is we need to bore this cap. The way we're going to do this is on the Colchester lathe. And the Colchester lathe is going to do nothing more than act as the mechanism of drive for our boring bar. How we're going to do this is uh, quite simple, but uh, it will take a bit of work to complete it. So I'm going to bring you guys uh, through it step by step. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this piece of uh, 1080 uh, ground stock that I happen to have here in the shop. We're going to use it as our boring bar. It will run through the uh, bearing caps here at each end and we're going to put a cutting tool uh, into this bar to allow us to uh, machine this bearing cap. If I take this bar out of here you will be able to see pretty clearly that this bearing cap uh, has a significant lip. That is because this bearing cap comes unmachined. It has to be machined to this bore in the block. Before we can do that, what we need is we're going to need some bushings to run this uh, line boring bar in this block. So I'm going to produce those bushings from some 60 mil uh, H30 aluminium bar that I have here. What these bushings are made out of is not critical. Ideally, we would make these out of a phosphor bronze, which is a very low wearing, uh, high lyricity material. But uh, over the years, I've done a lot of engine work and I know one of the uh, good mixes of material in modern engines is aluminum cylinder heads and steel camshafts. Uh, one, once the clearances are tight between the aluminium and the steel, you can get a very good wear resistance as long as you have a good lubrication. This is a process that I will probably only do once or twice a year. It's not something that I do uh, on a weekly basis. So I'm more than happy that a piece of this H30 aluminium will be a good bearing material uh, for these engine blocks. So the very first thing we have to do is we need to get an accurate measurement of the uh, ID of these uh, bearing caps. I could go look the data up, but uh, I think it is much better that we get a measurement directly off this block so that we know where we stand. So I'm going to get set up for some measuring and I'll come back to you in a moment. Okay, what we need to do now is we need to get an accurate bore measurement here so we can machine our aluminium blanks so they fit very tightly in this bore. Then we can bore a hole through the aluminium blank to uh, accommodate our line boring shaft. 
We introduced the dial bore gauge to the hull and we move the dial bore gauge around until we get the highest reading on the dial indicator. When we get the highest reading, we zero our dial indicator and then any movement we make should always read a negative figure. In other words, the bore should be increasing in size because the dial bore gauge is measuring across an angle. When we have that zero figure, we then use a micrometer to measure across these and get our measurement. Okay, we've done our measurements now using a combination of our vernier micrometer and our dial bore gauge. And we've found the, bar the bearing diameter here to be 55.55 millimeters. I've also checked the far end bearing cap and it also measures out at 55.55. So we know that to be a true measurement. That is the inside diameter of these uh, bores. We need to machine our blank here down to have a bearing diameter uh, or an outside diameter the same as this. It would be prudent of us, however, to actually make that diameter slightly larger for a couple of reasons. One, we want to get a little bit of nip from this bearing cap. A nip is just simply we want it to hold this bush, not to allow this bush to turn. Secondly, it would be nice to be able to create a little bit of tension on the boring bar as we're boring so that we can get a smoother bore, not to have any uh, possible uh, judder or um, uh, backlash in the boring bar. So I'm gonna shoot for a measurement of 55.6 millimeters which will give us 0.5 so it gives all sorry point all five of a millimeter oversize and i think that will be more than enough to get a, a nip off this cap uh, but also allow us to maintain a really good true register on this uh, bearing journal okay we're over here at the xl lead and we are going to set this up in the four jaw chuck. So the first thing we have to do is we need to take off the three jaw chuck here and we need to replace it with the four jaw. So let's remove the three jaw chuck. And this is one of the reasons I love this little turning center, uh, quite simply because it is just so compact and so easy to work small pieces of material. The Colchester has its place and we'll see that later on when we're uh, doing our job with the line boring. But for simple turning operations like this, there is really nothing uh, simpler and better than this lovely little XL blade. So we'll fit our four gel chuck on here. Okay, so we've got our four jaw uh, basically set up by uh, using our uh, steel rule to get our dimension close on our four jaw. We use our steel rule in combination with the markings on the chuck uh, to get ourselves a close center. Um, I always like to start with this little bit of paint on my chuck. I put it here uh, 15 years ago as my start point and I use this as my reference every time. It, it, there's no hard and fast rule to it. Uh, it's just the way I like to do it. So I start there and I just nip the material up in that position. Then I get my little Noga Mini uh, stand uh, or Noga Mini stand knockoff, uh, which uh, I just put up here on my cross slide and uh, I'm just going to uh, bring it in there uh, to start reading our highs and our lows. So uh, I know a lot of you uh, guys like to start at zero, so uh, let's do that and uh, keep everybody happy. All right, so we're at zero there. So uh, let's just take a look and see how far off center we are. Oh, quite a bit. Okay, so uh, we'll start by tightening our eyes and loosening our lows and uh, let's get this uh, into center. Okay, we're coming in there now. We've got 0.3. Uh, to be honest with you, that's all I can really hope for. The surface of this material is very rough uh, and it wouldn't have a great finish here. So um, that, that for me is more than close enough there. Uh, 0.03. 0.04, so that kind of brings us in where we need to be. So let's uh, just take uh, a couple of more measurements and uh, we can start our turning operation then. I think we'll start with a face cut across this surface just to get a nice uh, clean surface. And then we might put the uh, center in and we'll do some uh, turning across the face then to uh, reduce that diameter to our 55.6, which we were looking for originally.
minutes. Okay, so we have a nice uh, surface finish there. Uh, what we'll do now is we will uh, get our center drill and we will uh, bring in this, um, we'll bring in the tail stock here and we'll get a center in this piece of stock before we go any further with any more machine. Okay, we have our center drill in the chuck now. Uh, let's spin up the lathe and let's get a, a center point hole in here for our live center. Okay, we have our live center in now, giving us a bit of work edge support out here at the far end. Uh, we did some uh, measuring of our uh, bearing cap and we found it to be 40 millimeters wide. Uh, so I want to give it a little bit more, five millimeters either side. Uh, so we're going to go for 50 millimeters. Uh, I'm just going to put a Sharpie mark here on the material uh, so I have an idea uh, what to shoot for. Uh, we we'll just spin up the lathe there and we'll just pick that Sharpie mark up. Uh, that gives us a nice clear line to shoot for. Uh, we checked obviously just to make sure uh, that we're not going to interfere with the jaws of the truck and we've got uh, plenty of spare space there so we're happy we can take a couple of passes clean up this material uh, and then we can uh, start getting it down to size Okay, let's just see where that brings us to now. Okay, we're on the money there, uh, 55.61. Uh, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm just gonna give it a, a very light um, deburring of the edges here, and then that will leave us where we need to be. Okay, we're back over here at the engine block now. Let's just uh, try uh, fit this in here and just see how it fits. Trying that in there now. Just tighten these uh, cap bolts down nice and evenly. We don't want to uh, cause any undue tension on either side. So that cap is coming down there really nicely. Uh, and I'm getting a nice bit of tension. So I'm really happy with that, that uh, 0.5, we did all 0.5 over and it, it's a nice tight fit in there. And I think when we bore our hole through this cap, we're gonna get a nice bit of tension on the boring bar by just simply being able to snug down this cap when we get to it. Okay, folks, I'm really happy with the fit up of this bush inside this bearing cap. Uh, it's lovely, it's on center. There's still a nice bit of tension to be gained by torquing down these bearing cap bolts exactly where I want to be. I went ahead off camera, turned up another one of these bushings for the far end of the block. It leaves us in a position now where in the next episode, we can go back to the turning center, we can bore a hole through these two bushes, and then using the boring bar on the, boring bar on the lathe, we can bore out the, the internal dimension of these bushings to closely match this piece of ground stock, which we are going to use as our boring bar. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, first episode uh, and you'll join me uh, next week in the next installment of this episode. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and uh, I'll see you on the next one.